Welcome back guys. Today we're installing a seven pin wire harness on the 08 Duramax. So we have the intent on getting this bad boy. We got some BMW plates come in, so we'll do an install video on that because they did not use this truck for the purpose of towing it necessarily. They used it for an overhead camper. Let's take a look. So no fifth wheel above bed plates. I wanted to do a gooseneck, but so we can just reuse my hitch. We're gonna put the plates in later. You can take the plates out. Uh, if my boy decides to go a different direction, but there's no seven pin in the bed We have a six boy uh, six pin up there for running his power to the overhead camper and whatnot But we're gonna put it here and basically this templates off the Ford I kept a copy when I did the uh, Ford puck system in the seven pin in that one This is where I'm gonna put it on the Chevy I've seen them up there again as long as you have clearance in there You can put it wherever you'd like but I try not to put this down where you're gonna have a tie point going across it So right here I didn't want to do didn't want to do there just because it's really low to the bed and if you're that's really far to try and reach so we're gonna put it right there I will put a link in the description to the seven pin uh, you can buy an $80 Kurt one you can buy a hundred dollar one from GM you can buy the 40 one $40 one from Amazon it's irrelevant here's our spec sheet saying it's good on all of those we'll test it later there's the seven pin I see really no difference from the one that I bought from Ford or Kurt in the past, I see really no difference at all. Um, they don't put any electric diode grease on there, which they do that on the Chevy stuff and they don't put it in there. So we might put some on there. I will put a link in the description, all the tools we need. So I cut that template out. I got my little uh, striker here that's gonna tell us we know where to, to drill. We're gonna drill a pile hole here. If you've never used one of those, that's all it is. Basically, that puts a dimple in there and makes it easier to start your bit. This one doesn't have a little, um, like, screw-in type metal flanges that clip on there like the Ford. This one's actually a self-tapping metal screw. So we'll put that on, keeping in mind that when we torque it down, not to over-torque it and snap that plastic off because then that will be completely useless. They gave us some dinky little uh, keychain here. Whatever. So I'm going to get started here. I'm just going to make a tiny, tiny pilot hole for these self-tapping metal screws, and it's going to be itty-bitty. But I'm going to do that last. I'm mainly using the Ford template to line up the holes for this and for the 2 and an eighth hole saw. Again, I bought a 2 and an eighth hole saw entire kit off of the Zahn. Super cheap. It's done excellent in service to that. Keeping in mind that... You need to make sure you get a metal bit, not a wood hole saw. So here's the kit, guys. Two and an eighth is the hole. If you guys need that template, I will put a link on the description for you to find that. And for these, again, these are actually pretty decent. I bought some bigger ones, too. Um, for the puck system, those work great. I'm going to get several holes out of these bits. I mean, it really didn't even take the green paint off. When I used this last time so that's really ideal of course the Ford bed was aluminum so it cut through a little bit better we'll see if the steel kind of wears these down but it came with the arbors came with the locking stuff pretty much a standard drill the seven pin this for if you have the tools and you've turned wrenches before this is probably a 15 20 minute job it's a plug and play the old days you had to the old days you had to sit there with a test light and somebody turning the blinkers on here and doing all this and I remember my dad always having to test those and, and wire them and hardwire. This is plug and play. Just keep it that simple. I'm sure you could go even cheaper than 40 bucks, but why? At the end of the day, get it, plug and play, save yourself the headache, move on to the next thing. Because this, the bed plates on this is going to be a lot uh, more difficult because we're not removing the bed. So, let's get to it. Now, we'll tell you guys, anytime you're punching through your bed, down, sideways, whatever, go slow uh, especially like on the dually, there's plenty of room in between the bed and the wall of the bed, but I've seen plenty of people's beds on fours have dimples on them on the outside because they're putting a seven pin in or whatnot and went right through it and dimpled it. I've heard people drill down through their bed and hit wiring harnesses, all kinds of stuff. The gas tanks in a lot of these trucks are, are really close up underneath the frame. So just go shallow, go slow. You only have to do like four or five holes total to do this install on this one the bed plates and everything so just just go nice and slow so all right so i got my pilot hole here for the hole saw and then that way that bit can go right in there i can see my little dimples here i'm not going to drill those yet because i want to confirm once i get this hole just because this template 
didn't come with this seven way so i don't want to drill holes pilot holes and then end up not using those holes i did confirm by climbing underneath there that there's plenty of room to put this seven pin behind there because you're going to need enough depth for this and the actual plug here so you want to make sure that there's nothing back in it the stake hole cutoff is here and there is plenty of room behind there so we're good to go but we're going to go nice and slow and shallow all right guys so we got the hole drilled again super simple here the bit did's fantastic so you can go spend a hundred dollars on a milwaukee bit or you can spend 30 and get 10 bits that you probably won't ever use but you'll have them if you need them and this thing's already paid for itself uh it looks good let's take a look all right so we got our hole here we can see plenty of room this is going to be sharp as hell so if you want to file this down you can i've also seen people put some paint and whatnot on this ring we'll probably just use a paint pen and just walk around that a little bit so tons of room in there we went shallow even though there's you know stuff back there we had plenty of room to go in there this is going to be an optimal location on a chevy just because we have your tie down here, you have your, your board slat here, and then you have your, this is high enough that your standard load shouldn't hit it or anything like that. And <clears throat> short or long arms, you'll be able to reach it really well here. And so we're good to go. <clears throat> so now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and run the wiring underneath the truck, and then we'll, we'll do that. Again, this is a pretty generic instruction manual, guys. So let's take a look here. Uh, mount the seven pin RV style connector in your truck bed. They give you a generic picture of where to put it, how to do it, and what it plugs into. Long short of it is, one of these connectors, you're gonna unplug the one down below that's already hooked to your bumper. You're gonna plug it into it, and it's basically gonna plug right back into the bumper, and then the top one's gonna come up and plug into this, so pretty much self-explanatory. We'll get under the truck and I'll show you there. We're not going to mount this yet, until we run the, the wires up through here. And then my suggestion, guys, get a piece of string, drop it down in there, and just watch the hole, watch the edge of this, these are sharp. Um, but we'll drop a hanger down there, or a piece of string, so we can grab this and pull it up. If you have a piece of fish wire, you can use that. Again, however you wanna get it up there, that's fine, but again, trying to grab with your hands, again, it's a good way to get cut up. So, I mean, just reaching back there, you can see that that left those white lines on my finger. So you, one movement and you'll cut them open just like all get out, so. All right guys, so here is a tiny little hole to run your electrical cables through. So you need the two big ends down here. Now you might think, oh, I'll just run over the top of the frame underneath the bed here, because there's tons of room. I would strongly discourage you from doing that. Reason being is if you had to go to the shop and they had to take the bed off, your wiring's on there, it gets damaged, they're not gonna be liable for it. And or they may charge you more per hour for something like that. So just it'll go through the hole It'll fit whatever this is a push type pull connector. So here you're gonna push down pull it out So this is your OEM one up here. You might want to wear safety glasses under here, too Because just stuff falling in your eyes from here again, you're going to Take the one that's going from the body. It's gonna go here. It's gonna mix with this one This is the small one from the wire harness. We're gonna clip it on here like that like so, we're gonna clip the big one with that. And then again, we have the extra piece hanging down here. It's gonna go up to the bed. So again, they gave you some zip ties. You can zip tie stuff if you want. You can see that this is kind of a, a cob, you know, spider web of wiring harnesses anyway. But again, it's gonna fit right through the frame right there. You can see where it comes over, it'll be out of the way. And if you wanna zip tie it to everything you can, I don't know if you really need to bother with that, but I suppose if your truck has less wiring and this is falling down and you don't want to see it, you could zip tie it up there. But uh, all right, so we're gonna get done plugging and playing this and then we'll get uh, up to pulling it through the bed. All right guys, so we're, we're not tying a boat anchor here. So I got some cotton thread, it's, it's actually clothesline uh, that you might use when you're camping, tied it around this end. I got it up here like this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull it up through and then hang it on, hang it on the edge here. All right guys, so we got our string, pulled it up through here. I went ahead and filed the edge of this hole down. And then if you guys don't have these painter pins, just go grab them at Walmart if they're super cheap or you can get them off the zone. I'll put a link to that. doesn't matter what color because it'll be hidden. You're just basically sealing that metal, but it's really not super relevant. If you want to put some uh, diode grease, you put it on here, you can put it on the connector and we'll slide it in and get it done. All right guys, so super easy. This is basically a quarter, seven mil, eight mil, whatever you want to use. Um, actually just use this a ton. The 
This is for like screws, like deck screws. That's a quarter inch. So got that in. We'll put a tester on it here in a second. So we're good. We'll clean this up again. I've told you guys before, and this might seem stupid, but don't try and sweep this crap up with your hands. It's metal shavings, metal splinters suck. So we'll clean that up with a vacuum. We'll put a tester on this. We'll get underneath it real quick and see if there's any place we do want to zip tie. But that way we can confirm that we got the back one still working on the bumper and this one in. Again, this is less than 40 bucks. And even if this flapper breaks off over time, the, the cover will still be good. This has a bed cover on it, so it won't see a lot of rain. But you can also just save yourself a hassle by putting some uh, that diode grease on there. All right, guys. Now we got that installed. If you don't have one of these, these are super cheap. These are kind of cool. They're just a good way to, you know, over the years I've acquired several. My dad gave me another one at one point so I could have one in each vehicle. It's an easy way to check it before you get out to the middle of nowhere and you find out you have, you know, grounded out wire or something like that. So you can see right here, we have power. And just to tell you what it is, this is your 12 volt accessory. So this will be what charges your, um, if you're, if you're, seven pin going to your camper has the ability to power that's your constant all right so again and then we had our constant now you can see i put my uh my marker lamps on so you have your trailer marker lamps and you can go on and on throughout this whole thing now we're going to test this one we're going to test the one on the bumper but you get the gist of it we turn the left turn on or right turn on and actually i'll go turn one of the turns on real quick so this is what's groovy is because you know right away, even if you don't have your wiring schematic, which you can find one now on the internet. And like I said, I go back to when my dad did this, the internet wasn't available. You didn't have, you had to find a book or a climber manual that had it. And it was a pain in the ass. But here you can see left turns on, tail marker, right turn, backup lights if that's applicable to, that'll light up for the truck, but it may not be applicable to your trailer. But from there, we know that we're, our seven pin install went well. Again, we're gonna get in there. I'll show you a couple places that I did or did not zip tie, and we'll go from there and then we'll test this. It'll be good to go. One thing I wanna to touch on though, guys, is some people will say, well, what if I wanted to put a seven pin with a four pin in here? Well, again, you can, but the chances are if you're using the seven pin, you can just buy an adapter for a four and keep it with you because I'm not for sure if you're pulling a fifth wheel, you're gonna need that one because that's gonna have all the brakes, all the lights you're gonna need. This would be more if you had like a camper shell on there and you wanted to run wires to the third brake light and whatnot, but you can just buy these. I mean, these are dime a dozen now. Back in the day, these were super expensive. Nah, not anymore. So um, let's get underneath there and take a look at the zip tie situation. So we're gonna put a couple zip ties here on this little strut here. I try not to ever zip tie too much wiring, especially heavier wiring. This is obviously way heavier than this stuff. So we're just going to put a couple zip ties on here, maybe one to the frame up there because we do have some extra wiring and then that'll wrap up this install guys. Again, we're going to test the bumper uh, seven pin, but other than that, that is the install guys. I mean, it took me longer to uh, videotape it than it did to do. So as long as you have the tools, you're probably talking 15, 20 minutes, plug and play and on with your day, baby. Hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. Give me a like if you don't mind and we'll see you on the next one.